Alright, so as you hopefully saw, I have a flying drone, but before we start off with anything like that, uh, this video I will hopefully be making a uh, quadcopter, the open RC design from Daniel Reed that you can see right here, but I had to modify it a little bit, so we'll go into that in a few seconds, but the reason why I'm doing this is because I had some hardware over from a previous build, my first hexacopter uh, 3D printed quad that you can see here. Yeah, I know that video, oh, it, it was okay. But it used this system here, the Arda Pilot, which is a super advanced system, way too much for me and what I'm able to do with this kind of electronics. So I threw that away, but I still had a lot of parts from that. For example, this one here, which is the uh, power distribution board. And I still have the uh, transmitter that is, yeah, I think nine channel or something. So that's super good. And I had the receiver and also bought a KK2 board because I was going to do a quad like a year ago, but that never happened. So trying it out today. And of course we have the motors left. These are some 2826S 1000 kV. Not sure what that means, but they should be able to lift around one kilo each. Kilo of thrust, that was what, what I calculated because I wanted my hexacopter to be a six kilo lifting device so I could lift the drone, which was around 1.2 kilos, I think. And then a camera down below, but that never happened. That's you probably understood. Uh, but again, we're using here some turning you 20 a uh, multi-star opto thingies so the first thing that is related to 3d printing and not tech which is probably the main reason why you are here is how i took the original design and uh, printed a few parts you can see all of these arms here i tried to do some color coding but not super successful if i get this system to fly which i hopefully did uh, i will then print it in like reasonable quality and maybe some good materials. So I'm using mostly PETG and then some PLA for that stuff. And I ha had to do some modifications on the file. So uh, let's just jump in Fusion uh, and I'll show you guys how I did that. All right, so what I did is that I went to Thingiverse where Daniel Barspin uh, has his open RC quadcopter, the Beta. And there is actually a uh, step file here, so the full assembly. So if you want to have this file, you should go and download this and you can do your own modifications. Just remember what kind of license this is so you don't uh, do anything you're not supposed to. And of course, give some like and some love to uh, Daniel because this is a great design as always. So in Fusion, um, around here, what I did was that um, basically I needed a bigger, fatter battery. So this blue one here is my battery. So I just put that uh, uh, down. I removed the, uh, the cart that was supposed to be around here. I think it looked like this, this blue here, because my battery <laughs> won't fit in there. So I removed that and I made these holders just to kind of center the battery and to be able to just take some uh, uh, belts around here. But uh, what I also have to do and change, except for the middle, we'll, we'll go to that in a few seconds, I had to change the arms. So uh, this is a cross section of one of the arms. Uh, my ECS was so much bigger, so I had to make some space here. So I actually made it a little bit uh, less strong. And I think it's fine for now, but we'll we'll see when we fly and when we crash, because <laughs> we are gonna crash. That's just what's gonna happen. So I made some holes here for the cables so I can route out the cables and just get more access into this volume. And the way I did that was actually just create like a new file here, um, actually this one. So I just made a, um, a freeform model, created and some extra expansion room, and then more or less just made a Boolean operation. So I made that for all the arms. <clears throat> now, if we look here at uh, what I did inside was that I took and modeled my KK2 board. And this one below here is my power distribution board. I modeled those and made sure they would fit in here. And I made some screw holes as well to just make sure that I could attach everything. And this is my uh, receiver, is it called that? Transmitter, the part in, uh, in the drone. <laughs> so these boxes here, uh, marked in blue now, they are just to symbolize where the cables are because the cables are quite big here. Uh, I wanted to have um, maybe some FPV system or something here, but I ended up just having to tweak down all the cables around here, as you can see in the finished images. Uh, I also have bigger props, so I, I, it was great for me to be able to just see that I could rotate a, uh, I think they're 10 inch props instead of the original 8 inch 
don't quote me on that, it could be some other dimension, but they were bigger than the original. So basically that's what I did at the modifications and then just printed it. So uh, let me just show you when I put everything together and we'll go from there. Okay, so really what I did after the printing, well, I didn't print with really nice quality, just one at speed. More or less just cramping everything down into the arm and uh, I'm trying to hide over the cables but you want to be able to access the cable when you check the motors because you can reverse the, the rotation of the motors if it's wrong. And speaking of that, then just trying out the electronics outside of everything, making sure that it beeps, which it did, and everything seems to be working well. And then just checking the motor configuration, so we see which way everything should rotate, and well, it's funny that I say it, because I didn't check good enough, because yeah, this motor is spinning the wrong way. <laughs> so I have to do some field work on that later. And speaking of that, it was just assembly time, so I screwed everything together, Pushed everything on, making a sturdy frame, just fixing the electronics, pushing everything in, checking the motors once more, not controlling the rotation, just that they spin. And right now I'm losing daylight, so I'm just pushing in some more milliampere hours, or whatever you want to call it, and some juice into the batteries so we can go out and fly. And this is going to be exciting because this is my first flight with this system. Everything seems to be running well, so uh, let's go! A few moments later. Okay, so I made it to location. I think this is a pretty good location. Uh, I'm just going to show you the setup that we're doing. We have over here the uh, tripod where I'm going to mount the camera. We got the uh, yes, camera bag. <laughs> it's quite annoying to carry all of this stuff with me. And then we have a microphone so we can hear the cool sound and the drone itself. I'm just going to check the rotation of the motors and that everything seems good before we actually put the propellers on. And then of course the GoPro so we can get all that great shots. But just look at this location, it's uh, super nice. So that's gonna be fun, let's uh, try out putting on some propellers. Okay, let's go, I think everything is recording. I'm just gonna try to lift it a little bit and see if everything is working as it should. It's armed, can we spin it? Yes, propellers are cutting grass. Okay, let's try this. Okay, let's see the first problem. One of the motors are wrong, that's why. Okay, let's try again. Okay, there, I think I fixed it. So let's just try this again. I'm gonna arm it slowly. Okay, all the mo motors are spinning in the right direction. All right. Okay, that was pretty successful, I suppose. Let's uh, reset and try again. I think I'm gonna try to fly forward this time, slightly. But all right, let's, let's try again. Seems to be a little bit stable as soon as you get up into the air. In, into the air. Okay, this seems to be go pretty well. So far, so good. Let's bring it a little bit close. Oh, let's land it. That was what it's supposed to say. All right, let's get it a little bit closer if we can. Can you feel the dampening is pretty good? There's some oscillations, but in all in all, pretty good. Oops. All right, this is uh, looking pretty good. Let's see if we can uh, go left to right.
Okay, I'm gonna unarm it and call that a success. It actually worked without killing me and killing anyone else. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know how much battery I have. I just got it to uh, charge this a little bit. So I'm gonna try, just apply a little bit more, see how I can stabilize it. So uh, let's check it out. Okay, let's see if we can get some action over the GoPro. Let's see if we can do, do it a good landing, and I think we're gonna call it success for today. Okay, maybe not a good landing, but it was a landing. All right, so that's it for today with me and the drone, and I hope to do more videos like this with you guys, so make sure you subscribe. And check out the links down in the description of the parts I'm using and at the parts that you can use if you want to build your own open RC uh, quadcopter. And you should check out Daniel's site, the designer of this model. Uh, he has a mini racing quad as well, so you can build that if you want to do. I think it's a little bit cheaper to uh, get the parts too. So I'm going to link his channel down below as well. And I mean, seriously, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed flying it. I'm super stoked that it actually worked. So show me some love with the comments down below and some likes and it's gonna be awesome. So let's do more of this. See you guys soon, bye.